So Pink Floyd's masterwork, The Dark Side of the Moon, is having its 50th anniversary. And the super fans are just lining up to buy this massive box set of CDs, vinyl LPs, Blu-rays, DVDs, seven inch singles. There's a songbook, hardcover photo book. Okay, I have loved this album since the first time I spun it back with my headphones on. It was back in 1973 but I am not going to spend over 300 bucks to geek out on collectibles I probably wouldn't listen to or watch more than once. So the way I'm celebrating this musical milestone is to listen to the gorgeous new Dolby Atmos mix that's kind of the cornerstone of the box set. But guess what? I didn't have to pay anything. It cost me no more than my monthly Apple Music subscription and listening through my Apple headphones. You know, it's funny because I'm a Spotify user, but I keep an Apple Music subscription just for spatial audio treats like this. Now, if you have a newer model iPhone or an iPad and some headphones with spatial audio like AirPods Pro or AirPods Max like these, you can actually hear this high-res, lossless Dolby Atmos mix of Darkside right now. So what is Dolby Atmos? It's actually a 360 degree surround sound technology and it allows audio elements to be placed and to move in three dimensions. It also makes surround sound even more immersive by adding height channels. So sound sources can seem higher or lower, not just around you at the same level in the sound field. Okay, so you're ready to have your mind blown. Just go to your Apple Music account, find the Dark Side of the Moon 50th Anniversary Remaster, put on your headphones, and then turn on spatial audio. So you can choose fixed or head tracked. I usually prefer the fixed settings so my head movements don't mess around with the consistency of sound and the position of the instruments, but it's totally up to you. Now, what are you gonna hear that's different or better than the stereo version you're used to? Number one is very low noise. There's no hiss. You can turn it up nice and full, and the heartbeat and the voices of the first track speak to me, just emerge out of nowhere. I mean, it's so quiet, I wasn't even sure it was playing for a few seconds. Now, the second thing you're gonna hear is incredible clarity. This is a brand new mix of the album. It's done by longtime Pink Floyd engineer and producer James Guthrie. So back in 2003, that's 20 years ago, Guthrie did a 5.1 channel surround mix that was released on Super Audio CD and again in 2011 on Blu-ray audio disc. This was in the so-called Immersion Edition of Dark Side. Now what makes both the 20-year-old 5.1 mix and the new 2023 Atmos mix so special and different is that all the musical elements and the sound effects were re-imported and digitized from the first generation multi-track tapes, not from second and third generation submixes that were used to master other stereo versions. So having audio from those first generation multi-tracks just makes a huge difference in separating and hearing all the elements. I mean, you are definitely going to hear instrumental and vocal parts that weren't even audible in previous mixes. In some sections, it really is like hearing a whole new version of this album that you thought you knew inside out. Now, the number three feature of the new mix is a coherent and immersive sense of space. So we have to take a second to honor the original sound engineer, Alan Parsons, for the quality of the original recordings. I mean, everything was mic'd and recorded beautifully. Each voice and instrument has remarkable presence. And thankfully in this Atmos mix, the musical parts are all anchored in place. They're not just floating around, right? Because it was probably tempting, you know, it would have been tempting to say, hey, you know, we've got Dolby Atmos, which is basically 360 degree and overhead spatial audio. So, you know, let's move everything around and make it kaleidoscopic and more psychedelic, right? But that approach would have been interesting, but gimmicky, you know, like one of those cheesy sound effects records they used to make to demonstrate the wonder of stereo or the miracle of quadraphonic. I mean, thankfully, James Guthrie resisted the urge to move vocals and guitar and bass and keys and drums around. They, they each sit uniquely in the stereo field. Each one is in its own specific position from left to right. And he, he mostly stays true to that original stereo placement. I think that's probably why 100% of the purists on the Quadraphonic Quad Forum give this new mix a nine or 10 for terrific content, surround mix, and fidelity. 
Now, what Guthrie does move around are the spoken voices, the electronic loops, and the other sound effects. They move around like we've never experienced before. And it's definitely more psychedelic and immersive, but somehow without being pretentious. All in all, this is a mix and an audio format that really draws you into Dark Side without ever overwhelming you as a listener. What's cool to me is how it reflects the sort of inner psychological world and the human experience that Roger Waters is exploring in the lyrics. So those are three major pluses to the new Dolby Atmos mix. Low noise, clarity, and space. And you really have to hear it to live Dark Side of the Moon in a whole new way. Okay, but are there any drawbacks to this new spatial experience? There is just one for me. In some spots, this new super clarity and space between all the separate parts, it lacks some of the sheer power and density of the simple stereo version. Kind of reminds me of how the Beatles used to say the stereo mix of Sgt. Pepper's lacked the impact of the mono mix. I mean, sometimes when you push everything into fewer audio channels, it glues it all together sonically, and that's definitely been true with earlier versions of Dark Side. So one place I really notice that difference and the kind of lack of glue in the new version is that moment when the screeching voice of Speak To Me sort of cries its way into the lush beginning of the song Breathe. On the stereo version, it's like an audio orgasm. You know, for me, it's one of the most memorable and powerful transitions ever recorded. In this Dolby Atmos version though, it's, it's more gentle. It's kind of like walking through a doorway into a new room rather than getting washed into it by a wave. But almost everywhere else, Guthrie did a really impressive job of making sure that even when separating and clarifying all the elements, he didn't let them sound thin or fussy. Roger Waters' bass, it's really thick, round, and supportive. Nick Mason's drums are live and you can hear the power of each stick attack. Rick Wright's keyboard parts, especially the synths, are much more articulate than I've ever heard. I mean, I can really hear every note he plays. And David Gilmour's guitars are maybe even more powerful and rocking than they sounded on the original, where some of the effects got buried. In this version, you can hear the distortion. You can hear the Benson echo rec delay. You can even hear the pickup and the amp noise. I mean, it's kind of delicious for a guitarist like me. And then there are the vocals. Gilmore and Wright's double track vocal harmonies are massive and brilliant sounding without being harsh. The female backup singers sound incredible and Claire Torrey's wailing improv on the great gig in the sky is, is like a revelation because you can hear every note and every breath definitely more powerful and more intimate at the same time. So there you go. The cheap and easy way to experience this new high-res, lossless Dolby Atmos mix of The Dark Side of the Moon. Now, before you go, check out my rant and rave about how Roger Waters is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Dark Side. Mm. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're privy to all of my musical musings and discoveries. And that includes my Blow Up the Song series where I explode classic songs and recordings and I play you the original multi-track masters. Kind of like this one. <laughs>